governments need to ensure hmm, many things. I mean, you know, when I talk about some of the immediate threats, for example, one of the most important immediate threats is what I call the end of truth, right? If you look at, at, at hashtag AI model and see how unbelievably undetectable, uh, you know, it is to see if something is AI made or not, you know, and you can create all of those now, what would prevent us in, you know, the US election in a year's time or in a, you know, 18 months time or whatever, you know, what would prevent someone from going to one of the uh, uh, um, endlessly developing graphics tools and say, give me a 25 minute uh, documentary uh, that stars Donald Trump. Uh, and, you know, that basically uh, talks about all of the atrocities that this other person did when they were uh, teenagers in school with, uh, you know, ca uh, footage from what appears to be security cameras and, you know, testimonies from uh, humans that don't exist, right? Wow. And you you could literally, if if maybe by next year that would take hours of processing, but in two to three, four years time, this will be just a tool available to everyone like a face filter on Instagram, okay? I'm actually working on an app myself that I call Pocket Mo, which basically all of my work about happiness and stress and so on, I gave, I fed that to the, to the language model, okay? Created an avatar that looks like me. I'm trying to make it a little cartoonish so that it's distinguishable, okay? Well, you can go and ask Pocket Mo anything. And, and simply say, you know, I, my husband is feeling a little depressed since the loss of his child. What advice do you have for me? And I've been asked that question before. So Pocketmo will find it somewhere and say it to the user as if it's me, right? I mean, I'm not promising this yet, but it's almost ready. Hmm? And if I don't release it next year, I'll release it the year after. It's, it is inevitable that we will get to that place, right? So what would prevent someone of, from taking that app and making Pocket Mo say something that appears to be me, undistinguishable from me, mm -hmm. indistinguishable. So you're when you say that, it makes me think like this: in three, four years' time, I could be interviewing AI Mo instead 100%. of real Mo. Yeah, I was talking to a friend in the morning that there will be. I mean, the minute the app is ready, I'm going to host a, a Pocket Mo and Slow Mo on my podcast. I'm going to have in. a chat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, one of my dear, 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 dear friends, Peter Diamandes, uh, yeah, has, uh, I, I think he calls it, uh, uh, po uh, yeah, uh, po Peter Bot, Peter Bot. So he has he has a podcast episode of Peter Diamandes, uh, you know, uh, uh, interviewing Peter Bot. Amazing. Yeah, and, and the, the opposite will be true. Maybe, maybe Pocket Mo will interview me. I love that. So we, we took, you know, you have Noah Harari basically summarized it in a very interesting way. Of course, everyone looks at those things from their own perspective. Huh? To him, it's all about knowledge and about human history and about human ability to tell stories and debate and so on. And his description is that is that AI has hacked the human operating system, hmm. right? If I can, it doesn't matter, by the way, if I am an AI or not. Hmm? If what I told you right now entered your brain hmm? i have influenced you for the rest of your life mm -hmm. whether by the way what i'm saying is true or not whether what i'm saying is by a human or by an ai whether you agree with it or not hmm? if i told you by the way i i realized that uh, new zealand has the lowest number of redheads in the world mm -hmm. right doesn't matter if what i'm to telling you is true or not it doesn't matter i've occupied a part of your brain that is either trying to believe or not believe Okay, mm -hmm. that is trying to prove or dis or or, or 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 disprove, right? That is constantly going to that you know if you listened to it, it will pop up in your head next time you see a redhead. Of I've influenced you forever, right? And and that's the point. The point is that in the absence of a government intervention that literally criminalizes disseminating content that's created by AI without saying that it's created by AI, we will completely lose touch of the truth, right? By, by not having anyone invest in tech that can actually find out, you know, what it is that is true or not, we're done. 
okay? We're going, it is happening today when you swipe on social media that the Instagram recommendation engine or the TikTok recommendation engine is not only showing you videos to entertain you, they're shaping your life completely. Completely, you know what that means. What, what that means is that there are people out there in the world today that believe that one of the most important skills in life is to shake your hips, <laughs> right? And, and, and how else, why, how could they believe anything else if every video that they see, which has a million likes on it, is someone shaking their hips, right? And you start to reform your perception of the world informed by a machine. And of course, as a result, more influencers stand in front of cameras and shake their hips and yeah. the cycle becomes even more vicious. What kind of control and ownership do we have as individuals over the power That's of the machines? most beautiful, the, the most beautiful question of all. Okay. So when I wrote Scary Smart, I have to admit to you, uh, I wrote it out of uh, what I believe was a message from my son, my departed son. I, I, you know, I was somehow I felt that he was telling me, what are you doing? Wasting your time. We agreed we were going to do this. Right. And don't believe me or don't, it doesn't matter. But I was so driven to write that book. I wrote it in three months uh, because I felt an obligation to write it. So when I started to write Scary Smart, the book is is two is two fold. Huh? The first half is the scary part, as I call it. Okay. And the second half is the smart part, as I call it. It's not very smart, honestly. But uh, no, it is actually reasonably smart. No, It's fantastic. Uh, I can about. say that. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is the answer to Marvin Minsky's question of how can we have, how can make we make them have our best interest in mind, and and so the first part of the book was scary. All that I spoke to you about so far, hmm? uh, and more. Hmm? The the second ha ha part was, let's admit for a second what it is that we have control over. Okay, we can't stop them. We can't dictate how they develop their intelligence. And they're autonomous. They can make their own decisions. Basically, a little bit like your lovely children, your seven-year-old, when he becomes a teenager, right? You have no control over what he will do, right? But if he loves you enough as a teenager, he will say, hey, dad, let's go together and do this, right? If he loves you enough when he's 21 uh, and, and you fall sick, he is going to say, hey, dad, let me drive to you and take you to the hospital, right? And, and this is not because he's intelligent. This is because of the ethics you instill within him, right? And so if you, if you assume that artificial intelligence is autonomous, it, is, uh, 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 it evolves, it learns on its own, it develops its own in, you know, intelligence, accordingly, it will also develop its own ethics. Mm -hmm. and, and the definition of ethics is very interesting. Huh? The definition of ethics is this wishy-washy, never really discussed concept that society at large believes is the right thing, okay? And, and so with enough intelligence, hmm, we, we don't make decisions based on intelligence, understand that. We make decisions based on our ethics as informed by our intelligence. Mm. So, you know, if, 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 you know, if you take a young lady and raise her in the Middle East, she will say the, you know, the, the trend, the, th the way I should show my beauty is to be a little conservative, right? If you take her and raise her in, on the Copacabana beach in Rio de Janeiro, the answer will be a G-string, yeah. right? <laughs> now, is one of them smarter than the other? No, it's the same woman, right? Is one of them right and wrong? No, of course not. Okay, it's just that in a, a, you know the Brazilian culture for a woman to show her beauty is worthy of praise. Right in the in the Middle Eastern culture, for a woman to appear conservative and share her beauty with her loved one only hmm, is a, is what deserves praise. Neither is right or wrong, but this is how ethics are formed. Now, if we can show artificial intelligence what ethics they should follow, because they're learning from us. Huh? Chat GPT did not develop its knowledge by contacting an alien civilization somewhere and saying you know, how do I solve physics? No, it read all of the physics work, all of the literature, all of the chats and conversations that humans have generated, right? So it's learning from us. If we can show it the right ethical code, 
it will learn the ethical code. It will grow up, as Marvin Minsky said, to have our best interest in mind.